hello hello everybody and welcome to the welcome to the session um i'm keshav and it's a pleasure to have you all here so bef before we go 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 ahead um uh, if if we can in introduce each other so if if you could say your name and also if you could perhaps share um anything um you which attracted you to come to this session or what you might like to explore in the sense of uh, of of sound and the power of sound to transform the individual and collective consciousness so um yeah your name and what you would like from this session so i could understand you better better um also if you if you uh, would like spanish translation then you could also say that so hola a todos mi nombre es kesha y bien bienvenido aquí si se puede um, introduce yourself con su nombre y um cuál te gustaría con esta sesión um yeah so if if you all would like spanish translation si se gustaría translation in espanol por favor se puede indicar esta so if we could um, start to introduce us I can I can introduce myself first. Um, everyone, my name's Danielle. I'm going to be the tech host for the session today. Um, so if you have any issues, if you need translation um, or anything like that, you can just message me in the chat. Um, and towards the end, I'll be sharing um, some information about next steps following this session. Hi everyone, um, my name is Abby and um, I'm calling in from um, Turtle Island, Canada. And as you can see, I'm going on a walk so I will have my camera off for some of the time. And um, yeah, I've had, uh, I've been going to a lot of the more, I guess, um, talk oriented sessions in this conference and really enjoying it. And, it's been quite a week, so just really looking forward to some kind of calming sound um, body experiences. So thank you, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Amor. Uh, I am in Ireland. Um, what attracted me about the session, it, it was, I, I don't remember exactly how I read the description, but it was all about sound and sound healing. And, you know, I would like to know more about it. I, I, I use a lot of um, sound frequency healing, you know, like frequency in YouTube, like, like you know, 369 hertz and all this kind of, sound frequencies. So I do believe in like sound healing and I just want to learn more about it and experience it. How, how would you use it in groups and individuals? Thank you. Uh, greetings. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a teacher and, and mostly regenerative design and permaculture ecology work. And yeah, I'm fascinated by sound and sound healing. And I'm, I'm just here to learn. 
and how the um, there's this metaphor that the you know the students learn when they trust the voice of the teacher and they kind of lean into the sound of the voice and the trust and then they they are able to let in that voice and anyway thank you thank you So we could just go ahead introducing ourselves. Um, any anybody, no particular order. Um, um, hi. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, my name is Mariana. I'm joining here from India, from Oroville, tonight, and I do not have much experience with healing with sound and I also don't have much expectations I'm just here looking looking forward to seeing what unfolds from the session thank you uh, hi I'm Bhargava from anything from India so for the description of or the workshop about really brought me into this. So sound is everywhere the sound. So I thought this would be something interesting. So what's happening? Hello, uh, I am Ganmai from India. Uh, I recently worked on a project with government school children here and using sound as a project anchor. Uh, we were struggling with anger management issues of kids here. And uh, their literary skills are not very, uh, you know, they are not equipped with their literary skills. So uh, we could identify sound as an effective anchor, uh, as an effective tool of expression. And our project was based on uh, body percussion and rhythmic percussion specifically. Uh, but we just could identify that sound plays very important uh, role in their learning and in their expression, the way they express their, their own selves. And uh, here to learn more about different takes and opinions about uh, sound as and project anchor or how it... We are talking about education. Hi, I'm Maria from Bombay, uh, India again. Um, I'm an artist and I am quite interested in experiments with sound. Um, lately for one, for the project I was exploring um, the sound pieces by Yoko Ono and John Cage, if you are familiar with uh, them. And I, I mean, I am interested to see how, what are the possibilities of sound outside of music and outside of, you know, um, the traditional system of notation or traditional system of recording and instead see how exploring sound or frequencies or any of that can look like and what creating new languages for that can look like. Mm -hmm. So who whoever's not in introduce themselves? Please go ahead and then we um, go on with, with the session. 
Oh. Oh. Hi everyone. This is uh, Karina from Senegal and uh, Hiro. Oh, hi, this is Hiro from Japan. And uh, but we're both in Senegal. And uh, personally, I'm uh, researching on uh, how sound can be used for healing. And I've made a few experiments with the voice, which were quite interesting, but I'm still twerking the things. And uh, um, I realized with the help of some friends that some voices can have a very powerful healing effect. And uh, when, you, when you canalize the voice on a wound, for example, it can heal that wound very effectively. And I've tried it out a few times. So right now I'm exploring uh, using sound uh, this way. And also how to use sound this way without the taking um, the sickness in my own body and then how to cleanse as well when, uh, when we use this technique. And uh, Hiro is traveling around the world mm. and uh, yeah. <laughs> with a bicycle. Yeah. Also, if there's anybody who would like translation into Spanish, please indicate that now. So we get a sense uh, if we need to keep translating into Spanish. Si hay alguna persona que necesita translación en español, por favor, se puede indicar esta ahora. So we'll go ahead with the introductions unless everybody has spoken and then we'll make make way with the discussion. No, it wants to get introduced. <laughs> The pizza's in the oven. So I see people are still joining in. So with um, those who have joined in recently, um, if you'd like to introduce yourselves in anything, um, you'd like to share about what you what brought you here to the session and anything in specific you might wish to take away from the session. Ida via the cucumber this morning. Um, so again, is there anybody who would like to introduce themselves, or should we um, should we go go ahead? Um, uh, I'm Jin Lim from University of Maryland in the United States. I'm interested in all the topics people have mentioned. So um, I'm I'm gonna go go ahead with the um, 
cont continuing our session. Um, so some of the, the topics we are going to touch, touch, touch upon other than so I heard from the people who introduced themselves they're in, interested in sound healing. That's the topic we'll touch upon as well as um, anger management in the sense of transforming negative emotions using sound. Also, uh, sound as a way to heal wounds or to access memory. As somebody mentioned uh, as they, they had experience with using sound to heal a wound. So in other words, sound is a way to change sensation in the body and also release trauma, access past memories and release these memories. So the session is going to be at the intersections of sound, sensation, and memory. Um, so before we go ahead, um, we'd be playing a bit of music of mine just to get everybody um, centered in into the, the body. Um, if I would invite you all to, to start by, for, maybe you could, uh, you could sit in a meditative posture or a posture in which you're comfortable and take your attention to your stomach, just uh, grounding yourselves into the body and in the stomach and paying attention to the, to the breath, the feeling of the breath moving through your, moving in your stomach. Um, and as we'll play a few minutes of um, some music on the Veena, it's, it's a meditative piece of music. I would invite you to pick it to, to inquire into where in the body you feel the music. Sound can be felt in specific locations within the body, and this is something we'll be uh, ex exploring more. So the inquiry is where in the body do you feel the sound? And does the sound, what does the sound do in your body. So for example, if I feel the music or the sound in my stomach, what does it do? Does it produce some sort of movements in my stomach? Does it change sensation of breath in my stomach? These are the specific inquiries. Um, Danielle, if, if you could um, uh, please start the music from the beginning. And we'll yeah. play three minutes of the music. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Um, Daniel, if, if we can check, I can't really hear the music either. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. Um, sure, let me. All right, this is, I apologize. This is my first time hosting. Um, so I'm still orienting myself to Zoom. Um, let's see here. Um, Can you hear it, it now? Oops, what was that? No, let's go ahead. Let's give it oh. another. Okay. I cannot, let me, would it help if I put the link in the chat? Um, you could do that, but it would be, it would be nice to listen to it together. It, it, the sound was sort of coming and going. Maybe we can just try it again. If it doesn't work, then we just go ahead. Okay. Yeah, let me try sharing my screen again and I'll, I'll try playing it again. So um, maybe we can just we can just skip skip that for now. Um, if, if you could please put in the chat the link into the chat, and uh, people could listen to it late later on. Um, so that's an invitation to everyone to listen to it, uh, the music as and when you wish for and. And again, while you're listening to the music, you pay attention inside your body. So going going ahead, um, we um, I'm I, ha I have a flute here with me, and I could play some music for you all right here, or just play a couple of notes. So that, that was just a single note I played and I'm going to match it with my voice. It goes, no. So while, I, while I'm um, singing or chanting this singular note, we do the same thing. I'd invite you to feel it within your body. Maybe you could start in your stomach. No. I'll just repeat that a few times and if you focus on your stomach and see how the sound feels in your stomach. No. No. And now going up to your heart. No. No. And then to your throat. No. No. So there are different frequencies. Uh, basically, the body, uh, we're exploring different frequencies, a, different sound frequencies in different parts of the body. And all of this is related to an ancient um, science of of, of sound as, as yoga or, or sound as a tool of meditation in the body. So the, the idea is that the different notes resonate and have effects in different parts of the body. And as we can observe what the sound does within the body, uh, that's a starting point for a deeper inquiry into then how the body can transform. So transforming the individual consciousness 
how how can the body how 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 can the sound transform the individual consciousness in the sense of first transforming the body so i'm i'm just going to um chant these notes again and I invite you to pay to pay attention to first your stomach na na and then in your heart na na and then in the throat na na and now i'd invite us again in the sense of a collective if we um, chant this together so you could unmute yourself and we could start in the stomach don't worry if you get the exact note right or wrong it's more important if you just feel into your stomach and chant the syllable now um at whatever frequency you might like from your stomach so i'd invite you all to um if if we do this together no then coming into the heart na na into into the throat na na now we try to move between the stomach the chest and the throat so the idea is that the sound is traveling through the internal cavities within the body and as it does the sense there is a distinct sense and feeling of the sensation or the subtle breath moving from the stomach into the chest into the throat so na 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 uh don't hesitate uh, even if you're new to sound and so on there's nothing right or wrong here if we could try this together just first focusing on the stomach then letting the sound go up to your chest and then going up into the throat so it would be like na 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 try that together 
If I could uh, hear a few voices from from those who give this a shot, so the inquiry, like I uh, suggested earlier, is into can you feel the voice in the in the stomach, uh, I, uh, and in the chest, and in the heart, and if you'd like to share how that felt and how was the feeling of sensation, and anything you'd like to share from this shot. Um, Med meditation, some voices, please. I feel, I feel, I feel the vibration in the heart. I feel for one moment that we form into this symphony. It's like a, it's just only this echoing sound. <laughs> mm -hmm. I felt it more in the stomach. I think the heart, the the solar plate, the was was that the sacral chakra was moving, and it was easier for me to focus on that one. And then I think it got harder. I couldn't feel the sensation of the sound going up. Uh, but it was when I was focusing on everybody singing. It was like. When I got to focus on that and the sound that everybody was making, it, it felt like I was almost going through like a tunnel or something. It was like a very amplified sound. It was it was an interesting experience because it, it became like like really amplified energy, you know, like going through a tunnel or something like that. It was fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I felt as if um, it's opened up, so uh, in the stomach, in the heart, and the throat, there was this sensation like this. It's difficult to explain mm -hmm. it with words, it's easier to show it with a gesture. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there was this type mm -hmm. of sensation of uh, some kind of opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, direction is important. Like with your hands, you it's sort of the sound can move. For example, it can be like moving uh, in a radial direction, so moving in from a center and then spreading out into all directions. It can move horizontally. It can move vertically, like depending on how we're focusing. So the idea is that the sensation, what you feel, is sensation in 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 the body. So I can feel the sound moving horizontally. I can feel it moving vertically. I can also feel it moving radially, like from the center of the circle, then into all directions. So these are many possibilities. And all of this is the subtle breath, the subtle prana or the subtle breath, um, moving in different, what we call nadis in our tradition of yoga, which are the subtle passages in the body. So the idea is to be able to feel the sound moving in the subtle passages. And there are many different subtle passages which are interconnected from the stomach up to the heart and up to the throat. So to be able to feel the sound as it, as it moves through all of these subtle passages and it moves differently for different people depending on, um, on our individual journeys and our individual consciousness and also collectively as we listen to each other. Um, any uh, any other uh, 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 voices? Would anybody else like to share what they might have experienced? Or might like to ask any questions? Yeah, I felt the sound more vertically, um, and I felt a, I think stronger in my stomach and a kind of 
decreased in intensity as it went up. Um, and then I also felt some of that radial movement that, that you were just describing and others mentioned as well. Mm -hmm. Um, any, anybody else? Like to, uh, also, I could feel that we are actually, you know, progressing towards chakras, uh, the three points that we actually tried to focus our minds on and our sound on were the three chakras that are given in the yogic tradition. And that was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, I felt like some discomfort because I feel like the chakras are this, you know, structure and aren't we trying to kind of move out of structure? So I felt kind of uh, put in a box by it. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just uh, I wanted to share how it, uh, the sensation it made yeah, me well, feel. I Totally. I didn't use the word chakras. <laughs> Actually, I intentionally didn't use the word chakras because chakras can be quite limiting. Um, the, I did use the word subtle passages in the body. So I, I, I wouldn't bring in the terminology of chakras because as you, as you did mention, it can be putting things into a box, right? Like, so that's why the language I use is, is more the language of sensation. And, and feeling the sensation and the sound and the sense of movement. So I did speak about the subtle passages and the subtle breath, which I feel is interesting. So not to get yeah, limited I, by any, any idea of what a chakra is or what a chakra is. And actually like the body is made up of many minor, minor, minor subtle passages, which are all minor chakras. So don't worry about that. I would say focus more on like sensation and subtle breath. Mm -hmm. You were saying something? I also kind of felt the energy ricocheting more than, uh, you know, expanding. Mm -hmm. Like contracting, you mean? No, just kind of ricocheting within, like in a haphazard pattern, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the invitation... Like, like I was saying, all, all of us are, are such different beings. So we're all going to feel sensation very differently. And it's, it's very much likely that people feel the, the movement in the part of the body in different directions. And, it, you know, just to be open to where you feel, where you feel the, mo the movement or the sensation. Um, and and that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, as like the, the 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 whole science of or the the methodology, though I, I I don't restrict myself to any methodology and I wouldn't even use that word, but is a sense of transforming our individual consciousness, and it's different for different people. So there's there's no common way in which it happens, but it's a very general open inquiry, very very open, and a, a, a and the focus is on what we experience individually, and then as we listen to others, we also get a sense that. We share experiences collectively because um, uh, we do share. Um, we share our consciousness with, with 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 other beings, and we go through similar methods. Uh, similar. Some of us go through similar ex experiences, and we can definitely relate to some experiences of others. L listening to the voice of others is, is also important. So, um, yeah, is there any 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 other any other voices? I'm particularly interested in the process of change. So something is changing, and this is what we're interested to explore, the sense of impermanence of change, that the body is not, and the mind as well, is not, is not a constant um, static uh, com phenomena or construction, but it's forever changing. So the focus um, is on change what is changing the 
sensation is changing, the breath is changing, is the mind changing? The um, anybody else before I I, I go on to another um, exercise or so. So just moving on, our next my next inquiry is going to be into the mind. So the first inquiry was into the into the body, um, in the sense of uh, the inquiry was how is the sensation in, uh, changing? And now I'm going to get into the sense of the inquiry is the role of sound to deconstruct the mental language or change the mind. So the role of sound to deconstruct the mental language or change the mind, uh, we think largely in terms of, of words. So the thinking process is, is, uh, is in sense of language or words or sound. So is it possible to replace the sound of the mind, our usual thought process with, with other types of sound? And then to essentially deconstruct the mental language or change the language of the mind. Um, so keeping this uh, keeping this in mind, <laughs> we we'd go ahead. Um, um, I'm going to uh, use some melodic formations. So using melodic formations. We try them together and then see what it's doing to the thought process. Before we do that, maybe we can make some um, small movements around the body just to open up uh, parts of the body to allow the, the sound to, to move more freely. So I'd, I'd invite you all to um, focus at the base of your body and to make a very simple circular motion. So just moving the body in a circular direction, focusing on the base, so focusing on your hip bones and the contact with the ground. And from there, making a circular motion. Moving circularly, and then trying to move the energy or the sensation. So I spoke about sensation up the spine. So I start from the base of my spine and then I try to, I feel like a sort of a movement up my spine and letting that move wherever. So the stomach, the chest and the heart. So just um, I'll, through moving, creating some room within the, within the body and focusing then on the heart and in the chest and, and um, Spontaneous movement. So again, there's nothing fixed about this. There's no structure uh, here. Just uh, tuning into your body and seeing however you might like to move around the stomach or the base, the, the chest and the, and the heart. So going, going, going on then, uh, um, like I said, the inquiry is now into the mind. Uh, Perhaps taking a, a second to just focus on your thought, on your thought patterns, like what's going on in the mind now? Is the mind silent? Is it? Uh, are there some thoughts? Paying attention to the 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 stream of thought, um, and and just uh, seeing what's going on there. Is it quiet? Or is it? Are there a lot of sounds in there? And if there are sounds, what is it? Is it words? Is it just frequency? So we'll, we'll go on to explore some melodic formations. Na, 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 na. Perhaps if you could uh, just listen for a few seconds and then we we'll try something together. So I'm I'm going to um, go through some melodic formations, and I'd invite you to maybe close your eyes and just listen um, to the to the melodic formation, and you could pay attention again in your body and see what it does. 
um, and then from there we we go into the mind. So na 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 na. And repeat that a few times, and if you listen to it, and then we attempt to to uh, chant it together. Na 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 na. na. So um, let's attempt to to do that together as a as a collective. And don't worry if you if it's uh, if it's not perfect, but however you would. <laughs> Feeling the uh, remnants, the aftertaste, uh, the effect of, of this chanting in your body and your mind. I invite you to close your eyes for a few seconds. You could let your body, let it also move gently if you feel like it. Um, and then... So, how is the body moving gently perhaps and then how is the mind is there any change in the in how the mind is uh, feeling you can there's some background noise and children's voices
gentle movements in the body here. Sense the body changing and then just paying attention to what the melodic formation might have done to the, the quality, the nature of the mind. Now we have some discussion. Um, yeah, some voices, please, um, in terms of how is it to experience this melodic formation, inquiry into, into the body. You could speak about the, the sensation moving to different parts of the body and then into the mind, deconstructing the mental language sound, changing the language of sound. So some, some voices. Yeah. Hey, hi, everyone. Um, I can speak. Um, so I, as maybe you saw from my camera, I'm just taking a walk in, in the forest. And um, so the combination is just um, really it's 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 very very grounding and and I I noticed that um, with that last exercise of kind of trying to sync my voice to the timing of the other voices that I heard it was like I was kind of reaching for other people in a different way um, in a way that wasn't always around language <laughs> and um, so that felt really nice. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I would say with the last exercise, I'm feeling a lot more energy pulsing through my body and kind of like a more of a heavier energy at the back of my skull, like between the the end of the neck and the skull. Um, I don't really seem to have any thoughts as such. It's just I feel more energy going up. Like well before I didn't have that energy at the back of my head. I felt very, I, and I still feel very light, a bit like a, like a butterfly. And um, um, this pulsating um, feeling in the front and so and uh, like centering and coming out from uh, from the forehead and uh, and suddenly yeah there was uh, no need for words it was. Uh, only the sound that took the space, and it's uh, very calming, very, very soothing. Thank you. Thank you. I also think it felt very in tune and like following an intuition, although we were following in the beginning the tune and the sounds that you had shown us but then it still felt like a automatic intuitive way of reacting with each other in response and at some point all interwoven so yeah I also connect to what you said Abby about like feeling like it reached out in a way to connect without words with each other mm -hmm.
I I felt a more uh, more of a blockage with this one initially. It wasn't until the very end that I felt some of the same sensations that other people have described of kind of quieting the voice in my head. But initially there was a lot of resistance and um, it just felt like there was a blockage. Mm -hmm. This felt much smoother than the first exercise. Um, one of the um, one of the images I sort of had was of a swing being pushed and like the rhythm that it just naturally kind of got into or of somebody braiding your hair and you know their fingers just automatically moving into this sort of rhythm so it was very comforting and soothing and calming in that sense uh, it felt like an act of care uh, I also really uh, related to and agree uh, about the sense the you know feeling of uh, sinking your pattern to the other it felt very much like this um, prayer circle where everybody's sinking their heartbeat or their breath and that's just such a normal natural um, thing to do to sink yourself to people in your community but then as we moved on with the exercise I found that I was worrying less about sinking or trying to sink myself but uh, instead focusing mm -hmm. on how our different patterns overlap and you know uh, the randomness of the uh, way they overlap creates all of this infinite possibility of new sounds and new um, sensations and experiences. Hmm. Um, and uh, also the call and response kind of uh, action to it did kind of remind me of uh, the more than human world, uh, animals or plants and the signals they kind of send mm. each other and uh, how they communicate and wow. connect and, uh, with each other. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Any anybody else might wish to share? There's some beautiful images of nature there. So, um, part of part of the this this uh, collective consciousness, very much nature is a part of it, and. Uh, we're, we're coming to the end of the session because we're, we're coming to the end of the hour. Uh, but some of the inquiries, I, I could leave you all with a few inquiries, just if you'd like to reflect upon. One of it is on what sound, or on what it does to a, a sense of nature. So tapping into the wisdom of nature, the collective consciousness of nature through sound. So as the body changes with these sensations, how is it changing our perception of nature? In the sense of not only the sounds we might hear from nature, but also how we might intuitively perceive nature. Um, so that's very much a large part of the of, of the inquiry or the investigation we've been doing. Tapping into the wisdom of nature um, using sound in this way by paying attention to a, like we know the microcosm and the macrocosm are very much related. So as the microcosm changes, how does the macrocosm, the world around us change? And also beings are a part of nature and a not just human beings, but beings from, from all different realms. 
um and just to also say that in most of the major spiritual systems sound has been always the the primary of force which which moves life a lot of the ancients came to the same realization that sound is one of the most important forces and also that sound actually influences what the eye sees so sound before sight as opposed to in a modern uh, consumeristic and capitalistic culture we often tend to pay more importance to the sight it's actually sound which uh, which influences the perception of the eye so these are um some of the inquiries which i would i would like to leave you all with my my website is is in the chat and um you're free to 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 look at um some of my work and my music there and also please feel free to write to me if you'd like to be in touch my email as well as my whatsapp number is there um so before we close is there any anybody uh, would like to express or any question um anything specific um before we close or if you'd like to express anything uh also i mean i've been thinking quite a bit about how uh deaf people experience sound and when you know hearing people uh think about sound we're constantly listening with our ears instead of listening with our entire body so yeah i think uh sort of thinking put being embodied in that sense uh is um i think something that we could all focus on a little more mm-hmm. um any question at at all if there's anything in specific which you might have experienced to which you're pondering and um you might if you want to express that then we can do that now before we before we and then certainly yeah listening to the whole body which is why sensation and the vibration in the body is very important um so unless there's anybody who might wish to express anything we're going to um come towards the end of the session um and if we could just chant together once and listen to our voices maybe that's the most powerful like many some of you have mentioned the sense of reaching out to others and we relate to others even if we can't express it in words but just listening to the sound and feeling connected with one another and recognizing each other intuitively there which is very powerful so let's just chant at whatever frequency you like however you like so we just chant together na
So thank you to everyone. A big namaste and uh, thank you. Thank you. Feel free to reach out to me to send me a message or email as, as you may wish for. Um, and thank you to Daniela for, for hosting the session. So I wish you all a beautiful day. And as you move through your day, see how the sound moves through your body and mind and how you might feel. Ciao, ciao, blessings.